move forward, I guess, and talk about the time that you auditioned for Van Halen because uh, that is really a cool story, and I, I yeah. probably didn't get all the details. So tell the story and fill in the blanks. Well, it's funny because I, I don't really – I don't tell the story very often because – uh, you know, uh, there's a company that made a, a documentary about it and told the story better than I could tell it. You know, so I always recommend that people watch uh, Mitch Malloy Van Halen's Lost Boy on YouTube. Mitch Malloy Van Halen's Lost Boy right. on YouTube. Great, great, video. great little mini documentary. It's like 10 minutes right. and, uh, and uh, tells the whole story. So, but yeah, I can certainly share some. Do you have questions about it or? Yeah, yeah. Just kind of tell us first, kind of basically what happened. I mean, how did you get the call? Um, okay, so there was a, a couple of reasons for that. Um, they had uh, just recently shifted management to Ray Daniels. And Ray is famous, famous manager for being Rush's manager his whole mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. Like he was... I think he started managing them when he was 16 or 17 or 18 or something like that. Right. When they were all really, really young. So, you know, it's a phenomenal success story for Ray. And Ray also um, had started his own label in Canada. So he was really successful, really busy. And his sister was married to Al Van Halen. Oh, okay. Right. So he was sort of on their radar always since, right. you know, Al was, you know, kind of married to that. Right. So, you know, to his, his sister. And uh, when their manager, I think, died, I think um, they needed a manager and it was like, boom, there was Ray. So there was a guy by the name of Steve Hoffman, who was a dear friend of mine, who has since passed away of cancer. But he was my road manager when I was on RCA and I was touring when I went and toured Europe and when I was in the States and he was my, he was my day to day guy manager and my tour manager. So he called me one day and said, I have this opportunity to go work for Ray Daniels who manages rush. And he's got this one and that one and blah, blah, blah. as a label. And he said, but I have to move to Toronto because, because, uh, Steve was living, he was a New Yorker, you know, born and raised in New York. Right. And for him to move anywhere, like a lot of like true New Yorkers to move anywhere else is like, like they don't want it. Like they consider New York to be the pinnacle yeah. and they don't want to move. They don't want to move anywhere else. Right. And if you know New Yorkers, you know, that's true. Yeah. Right. So, 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 um, I said, dude, you've got to go. You've got, that's like huge. You oh. gotta go. I mean, you you you'll learn so much. And I mean, Steve was already a really good manager and knew pretty much the whole business. But it was just a you know a kind of a sidestep for him, and it was a good opportunity. And so he did it. You know, I don't know if I had any influence over that decision or not, but I certainly encouraged it. So he got up there, and then Ray became Van Halen's manager. And wow. Steve, Steve called me one day and said, I, I think you need to sit down. I'm like, okay. He's like, dude, this is big. I'm like, okay. He goes, first of all, do you have any contracts? I said, well, I'm about to sign a publishing deal and I'm about to sign a record deal. So, but it's in negotiations. So no, I don't have any paper with anyone. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a manager, but it's a handshake. Uh, it's a three deal, a three year deal with him. And that's only about, you know, a year and a half in or something like that. Um, and he said, okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. I said, why? And he goes, well, then he just fired Sam. Mm. And I showed Ray your video and played him your CD. And he, loves you he thinks you are perfect for van halen so um i was like wow cool all right um i'm in you know like, <laughs> yeah answers yes and then and then the next day desmond child called me who i'd written with um uh, not a lot but i wrote with for the first album 
and I kind of knew him a bit. And um, he had said, he goes, are you sitting down? <laughs> and I'm like, here we go again. I think I know where this is going. Yeah. And he goes, I was just at the Van Halen compound. And we were talking, they were trying to figure out who should be their singer. And I told them that you should be their singer. And so it was, I think, a combination of, you know, I, I think maybe Desmond, you know, Desmond is a, an amazing salesperson, by, you know, from what I do know of him, he's like, when he believes in something, he can really sell it. Right. Um, and um, and I, you guys know who he is. He's a huge songwriter. Yeah. He wrote all Bon Jovi's kind of hits and he wrote Kiss hits and Share hits. And, Every, yeah, everybody. Yeah, a massive, massive songwriter. So he has a lot of clout, and, you know, he was writing with them apparently. And yeah. And he said, Oh, Mitch Malloy, that's it. You know? Cause I think maybe they mentioned me to him. Uh -huh. You guys, you know, this guy, Mitch Malloy. And he was like, Oh, poof. yeah. <laughs> so he called me to tell me that he had given me the you know stamp of approval and that, that he thought that it was a done deal that they wanted me. And that was it. So, um, Eddie called and we spoke and they flew me out. And I went and hung out with them for a couple of weeks. And on the third day, they told me I was in the band. Eddie told me I was in the band. Like it says in the documentary. Yeah. I mean, just, just like I explained it in the documentary, uh, gave me the, the kind of mafioso, you know, kiss on both cheeks and hug me and walked out. Wow. That happened, that happened in the 5150 control room. I found out I was in Van Halen in the 5150 control room. It was. Wow. It was unbelievable. Yeah. It was mind blowing. Like he walked out of the room. I sat back down in the chair. I was at the console and I just started giggling like a little girl, you know, it was like, <laughs> like, like my body guy. I was just like, <laughs> you know, Dude, and, I, I, that, and I think I actually said, I'm in the you know I mean? <laughs> like that came out of my mouth, That's even cool. though nobody else was there. <laughs> That's awesome. 